Donald Trump campaigned on a promise to lower inflation and fix the American economy, an economy that most experts say is right now one of the strongest performing in the world. But much of Trump's economic plan lacks some detail. And one piece of his economic plan for a second term is to impose sweeping tariffs on other countries, particularly China. Trump has favored tariffs as a solution to economic problems for years, even saying on the campaign trail that tariff is, quote, the most beautiful word in the dictionary. Which is weird, but whatever. Bottom line is that tariffs are neither inherently good nor inherently bad. They are a tool which, when used strategically, can remedy trade imbalances, protect certain domestic industries, or influence other countries to improve their trade, wage, or human rights practices. Trump already imposed considerable tariffs during his first term in the White House, and the Biden administration has maintained $360 billion worth of Trump's China tariffs. They've even imposed some of their own. Trump now says that he plans, plans to increase tariffs in his next presidency, floating the idea of a blanket 20 percent tariff on every U.S. trading partner and up to 60 percent on most imported goods from China. He's even said in order to keep Chinese electric vehicles from undercutting American electric vehicles, he would impose, quote, whatever tariffs are required, 100 percent, 200 percent, 1,000 percent. China dominates the electric vehicle industry worldwide. In 2023, China was responsible for 58% of the global electric vehicle market. That's five times the size of the U.S. market. But these Chinese electric vehicles are not sold here in the United States, in part due to restrictions that Trump imposed in his last presidency and restrictions that were upheld by the Biden administration. One of the most popular Chinese electric vehicles in the world is the sleek BYD Seagull, made by BYD, which stands for Build Your Dreams. It costs approximately $10,000 to buy in China. Now, if that vehicle were imported to the United States with the current tariffs on Chinese EVs at 100%, you'd pay $20,000 for it here in America. And $20,000 would still be cheaper. It'd be $8,000 cheaper than the least expensive electric vehicle made here in America, like the Nissan Leaf or the Chevrolet Bolt. So in order for the U.S. to have a competitive edge with China in the electric vehicle industry, these tariffs could help even the playing field. It's worth noting that there is an American-made electric vehicle company that happens to benefit directly from tariffs like these, and that is, of course, Elon Musk's Tesla. Musk is now part of Donald Trump's incoming administration as co-head of the so-called Department of Government Efficiency, which we'll talk about a little later in the show. But here's the downside of tariffs. They almost always, at least in the immediate future, until markets can adjust, make goods more expensive for the consumer. Tariffs are not, in fact, paid for by foreign companies. It's the importers, a.k.a. the American companies, that pay those tariffs, and those companies universally end up passing that tax onto the consumer in the form of higher prices. So in the end, you, the American consumer, end up footing the bill for tariffs, or you just don't buy the product. Here's where things get even more complicated. If you impose tariffs on another country, that country will return the favor. They will impose tariffs on you, and then you can have a trade war. Donald Trump sparked a trade war with China during his last presidency when he slapped a series of tariffs on Chinese imports and the Chinese government retaliated against U.S. exporters. As a result, U.S. exports, particularly of agricultural goods, dropped significantly. American soybean farmers were hit the hardest since China is the largest buyer of American soybeans in the world. So to help fix this crushing blow, you, the taxpayer, then had to subsidize American soybean farmers to the tune of about $28 billion. So in the end, you paid for the tariffs twice. And I am not here to argue for or against tariffs. That's a conversation for people much smarter than I am. But as I said, sometimes they're a useful and necessary tool. But a policy of this magnitude needs to take into account the whole picture. As economic journalist Bethany McLean writes in an essay for The Washington Post, quote, a targeted tariff that's part of a broader policy code could be the right thing to do, even if there are economic costs. But we need to be humble about what we don't know and think in a nuanced, careful way about exactly what problem we're trying to solve and what the costs could be, which is sage advice. Unfortunately, Donald Trump's policymaking vibe is not one we would generally call humble, nuanced or careful thinking.